Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English just summary translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Kamru Zama Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on the third of Jumadul Akhirah, fourteen forty-two, corresponding with the English date seventeenth of January, twenty twenty-one. The Majlis took place at the residence of Hazrat Wala Dhamad Barakatuhum Baitul Azkar. After the Ishraq Salat, the morning majlis, Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Hazrat Wala Damad Barakatuhum quotes the ayat of the Qur'an Majid, Wa aslih li fi dhurriyyati, inni tubtu ilayka wa inni min al-muslimin. Dosto, buzurgo, friends and elders, more or less, in about 1950, uh, we were in Fatapur, and... An alim came who completed his studies in Darum Dioban. He was the student of Azad Shah Anwar. He came to Shah Wasiullah al Abadi and he was saying to him, complaining to him about the deplorable state that he was in, referring to the challenges that he was facing with his children and how they had adopted another path. The Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatuhum said that Shah Wasiullah immediately made talqeen and told him to make this particular dua. Allahumma aslih li fi dhurriyyati inni tubtu ilayka wa inni min al-muslimin. All shukar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thought about this incident that took place those years, this morning, and decided to speak on this Aslih li fi dhurriyyati Grant salah Righteousness Reformation to my children Like how we have the rights of parents And we need to respect them etc Children also have rights Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an A person came to him And was complaining about his children the incident goes something like that. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala says to him that, listen, what about your duties that you owe to your children? And he replied in the negative saying that I did not do that. So then he said, how would it work out? So Alhamdulillah, I have amal on this particular dua. I constantly make this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on different occasions and in different places as well. It is a very comprehensive dua. Today, while reading and studying and going over, making tadabbur of the tafsirs of the Qur'an, I came to learn that this dua was the dua of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, according to one narration. But dua... Who's making dua today? Not a matter of understanding uh, or misinterpreting that people are not making dua. However, this has become common that people are not making dua. Allahumma aslih li fi dhurriyyati inni tubtu ilayka wa inni min al-muslimin. We cannot make islah of ourselves and we cannot bring righteousness and salah and reform to ourselves correctly, perfectly, and how it's supposed to be duly done. Then how would we ever achieve this and come accomplish this with our children? Therefore, we should make dua. I've just been reading, and today I've seen that how well and lengthy Mufti Shafi Saab has written on this particular subject, on under this particular ayat. And just a few minutes ago, before starting this majlis, I was going through the tafsir of Manana Idrisap Kandalwi. Nevertheless, the ayat goes, Qala Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alay wa ala waliday wa an a'mala salihan tarudahu wa aslih li fi dhurriyyati inni tubtu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin. 
O oh my Rabb, grant me the ability to be grateful for the bounties that you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and grant me the ability so that I am able to carry out good deeds with which you are pleased. I mean, shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant me the ability to be grateful for the bounties that you have granted me and my parents. The season of summer, heat, and the season of winter, and we have all the necessary commodities, these great ni'mats. These are all dunyawi ni'mats, and it is granted to all. Malana Sufyan, the, uh, the Muhtamim and the principal of Darul Loom, he says that the students are now coming with different, different types of jerseys. And these ni'mats have become common. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it common and people all over are enjoying this. But Allah ta'ala make the ni'mat of deen also common. Allah ta'ala give us the tawfiq and hidayat of making shukr. So this year is not confirmed. It is not hatmi. Rather, just there is one narration stating that Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an made this particular dua. And the dua, he is making shukr and for what he has been granted for the bounties and the bounties that were granted to him and his parents. What was it? It was the bounty of Islam that was granted to him. And thereafter, his parents had also accepted Islam, the bounty of Islam that were given to his parents. Alhamdulillah, I make shukar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hazrat Wala Dawud Barakatuhu, me saying that I got an opportunity of going over this verse. And the essence of it is this, that we should ponder over the Quran, the ayats of the Quran. Allama ibn Taymiyyah used to go out in the quiet areas, in the jungles, deserted places, and he used to cry and humble himself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that, Oh Allah, you made certain, certain people understand. Oh Allah, like how you made them understand your ayat and your kalam, make me also understand. Make me also understand today. We make a khatam or two, three khatams. The Hafiz is happy and the Malvi is happy as well. No, not only there. Take it further. Make the Dabbur. Ponder on the ayats of the quran -e Karim. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala used to say that when I do not understand a certain ayat of the Quran, it causes me to cry. That I am not from the Ulul Albab. I am not from those who are the intelligent ones. That who will take lesson? Who will understand? Who will be able to get the correct meaning? Who will it be? It will be the Ulul Albab, the intelligent ones. Therefore, when I do not understand, then I understand well that I am not from the Ulul Albab. Now, who's saying this? Ra'sul Mufassirin, the giant of the tafsir of the Quran in Majid, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. So, mention of oneself is made in the dua, thereafter, mention of the parents, and after that, an a'mala salihan tardah, after making shukr, that I be granted the tawfiq and the hidayat, the ability to carry out deeds, such deeds with which you will be pleased, O oh Allah. Who is making dua today? Allahu Akbar. Dua is, an in the, is a separate chapter on its own. It is a separate department on its own. Like how we have the masail of Salat and Siyam and the knowledge of it, it is endless, unlimited. Similarly, this department and these chapters of dua, they are unlimited. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uti tu jawami al kalim. I have been granted and blessed with the great bounty of concise speech. Study this, go through it, how much of kalam and how much the ulama have elaborated on this. 
First, what was mentioned, that what was Jawami al Kalim, the concise speech, was that of the Quran in Majid. Also, this is mentioned that Jawami al Kalim was the du'as that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Ummah. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah sahab, when it used to come to the occasions of shab -e barat the 15th of Shaban, or shab -e qadr the odd nights of the last 10 nights of the holy Ramadan, or month of Ramadan, then he would make talqeen and say to us that take the munajat -e makbul and make those du'as all the sections, all the manzils, all of them from start to end. And he would already start telling us this, that do it now. The night has started after the Maghrib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's du'as are great. They are tremendous. Allahumma inni as'aluka aishatan naqiyyatan wa meetatan sawiyyatan wa maraddan ghayra makhzi wa la fadih. Manana Shia wa Sayyullah sahab used to gather all of us. He gathered all of us. And then he said, I want you people to make this dua on my behalf. Take my name and make this dua. What ta'aleem? What ta'aleem has been given and has uh, reached us? Now it is our duty to learn this ta'aleem. And who's saying this? Such a great wali and buzruk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inni as'aluka aishatan naqiyyatan wa meetatan sawiyyatan wa maraddan ghayra mukhzi wa la fadih. Oh Allah, I ask you for a pure life. A peaceful death. Peaceful death is mentioned in this dua. Look, look today around how people are passing away. A peaceful death is what's being asked of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dua. And a passing away which is neither dis and and a return to you which is neither disgraceful nor dishonorable. Kesi umda dua. What a beautiful dua. What a wonderful dua. Shah Sab gathered us and he told us all to make this dua on his behalf, taking his name. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that a ayat under discussion, personal attention was given regarding oneself and then uh, the parents and then in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning making shukr in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Aslih li fi dhurriyati Inni tubtu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin Oh Allah I cannot do this Inni tubtu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin. I'm turning in Toba to you. I've disobeyed you. But I'm turning in Toba to you. You rectify my children. You bless them with righteousness. Now when was this dua made? Hatta ida balaga ashuddahu wa balaga arba'ina sana. Until he reaches the age of 40. This is the time when the dua was made. When he reaches complete mental and spiritual maturity. Grant me the ability to make shukr. So nevertheless, dua, to make dua on its own, it is a sign of intelligence and good understanding. Good understanding. O oh Allah, bless us with such awlad that will bring happiness to us in this world. You know the share and the couplets that go. Ni'mul ilahi ala al-ibad kathiratun. The bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his servants are tremendous and many. Wa ajalluhunna najabat al-awlad. And the greatest of them all from amongst the greatest ones is that a person has noble, obedient, Good, upright, righteous children. Now listen to this. I want to tell you this. Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatum is saying. This is my share. I'm adding it to it. Niqamul ilahi. Alal ibadi kathiratun. Wa ajalluhunna razalatul awladi. That. The challenges of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His tests. His trials. His tribulations. Upon. His servants are tremendous. 
and the worst of all of them is disobedient children unworthy children children who do not listen children who trouble Allahu Akbar I am mentioning these couplets after so many long years now if the children are not righteous and upright and the spouse is not up righteous and upright then what can we say this dunya rather the person's home the individual's home itself will become an abode of jahannam jahannam will be right here in this dunya therefore of utmost importance it is to see to the reformation righteousness of one's children and ourselves as well and grant righteousness to my aulad so that i i may have peace in this dunya due to their righteousness due to their righteousness i may enjoy peace in this dunya allahu akbar what tafsir monana idris ab kandalwi was a unique commentator of the quran and he was he thought also in darul ulum deoban mufti shafi sahab's tafsir is an umumi tafsir it's a general tafsir the ma'arif ul quran shafi'i and the ma'arif ul quran idrisi it is a darsi tafsir in front of him there were what can we say students and students of that caliber students who understood quran and hadith and now they were almost about to complete their studies so this is of a different level so allah grant me righteous children so that i can have peace in this world and i can have peace in the akhirat as well because the righteous children would lead to an increase in my bounties in the akhirah the righteous child is sadaqah jariyah if the righteous child merely says bismillahir rahmanir rahim it is the means of the forgiveness of the parents so allah grant me this in the dunya and in the akhirah you know when a child misses one day lessons of just one day at the college then the parents become so upset and they are so much uh, concerned about that but if one day the child our child our offspring doesn't attend the masjid then it's just nothing and it is just left there are no effects but by merely missing a day's work at college you would miss that sabak for that day but missing one day in the masjid it is possible it is possible that the individual's name can be cut off can be wiped off from the list of the fortunate ones it is written that if a person re- leaves behind pious offspring then those pious children what they do great portions would go to the parents and of course they would send for the parents as well imam razi rahmatullah alayhi writes in his tafsir about a saintly person a wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abu zuruk who passed by a qabristan and he was made to see by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the punishment of an individual in one of those graves he continued he finished his errands and on his return when he passed by the very same cemetery and qabr he understood that the person was at peace at that time he turned his attention to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah ta'ala inspired him that the person was a disobedient person but at that time the offspring of this particular person recited bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah who is most kind who is most merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that my mercy came into josh at that time i could not tolerate that i'm punishing the father while the little child is reciting for the very first time in the name of that allah who is kind and merciful therefore i have forgiven the father 
إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Verily I repent to you for my sins and I am from among those who surrender obedient. Now this is Sa'adat. This is a great fortune. And this is an example of righteousness, salah and good reform. A person who is concerned about Hukukullah, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rights of Hukukul Ibad, the rights of Ibad, fellow mankind, and his effort is in that direction. So, what happens then? What happens? Such a person, he's worried about his own Islah, he's worried and he's concerned, his attention is on his parents and his children as well. So then, such a person is given the tawfiq and the hidayat to do three great amals. And when he does that, he becomes worthy of sa'adat and a great fortune. Number one, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an individual the tawfiq and hidayat of making shukr, shukr ki tawfiq. And number two, when a person is given the tawfiq to do good deeds, such deeds that brings the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come to the Sangam here, where the Ganga and Jamna, the, the, the two rivers meet here in Ilahabad, and see what people do. They do strenuous things, and they do mujahada. They don't even possess iman, you know. They dig, and they dig, and... So much, so much that a mountain also is dug. So much of an effort, but nothing is achieved. But a mu'min, he takes his shuffle and his spade and just once he hits it into the ground and he will find gold. What are we trying to say? What are we trying to say here? That karamats, these people do all those things, but so long as it is not attached with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all these kharke adat, supernatural act, are worthless. Qazi Sanaullah, Panipati, has written, and Shah Wasiullah ila Abadi used to read this out to us, that it divides sunnat. Also, it must be makroon, it, uh, the, 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 sorry, this karamat, it must come along with it divides sunnat. And some of these people, can you believe, they even start adopting sunnats. But listen well and understand it that the sunnat also will only become virtuous if it is accompanied by iman. They do not even possess iman. So number one, when a person is given the tawfiq and hidayat to make shukr, the tawfiq and hidayat to carry out a'mal which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the third one is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him with naik and salih awlad, then he is blessed with sa'adat e bashariya. So Manana Idris Kandalwi rahmatullahi alayhi, is using the word Sa'adat al-Bashariya. Great human achievement, accomplishment and fortune in these, whoever is blessed with these three qualities. And Mullah Ali Kari uh, uses the words Sa'adat al-Hakikiya. Genuine, a genuine fortune, the ultimate fortune. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the A'mal and he also mentions the jaza of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he accepts that, then he gives the jaza as well. Allah ta'ala shows us the a'mal and he gives the jaza as well. Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Delwi rahmatullahi alayhi, when writing to one of the wazirs, he's, what did he advise him? A'mal me ikhlas. Adopt sincerity in your good, in your deeds, in your a'mal. And let not one belie the other. Rather, the internal and the external should be on the same level, should be the same. And keep in mind always the rewards of A'mal, the jaza of the A'mal. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha used to say that initially, and this was the style and the stur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the ayat that were revealed were discussing the ni'mats of Jannat so much, so much that it created shock and enthusiasm and thirst to carry out a'mal so that one would become eligible for these ni'mats. And similarly, so much of dozakh and fire hell was mentioned that 
it created disgust in the heart towards those a'mal and those evil actions. So Malana Idrisa, Kandalwi Rahmatullahi, is saying that without doubt, the highest jaza in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that of Jannah. And if we turn it around, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased, then the severest punishment there would be that of fire hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, the tawfiq and hidayat of making shukr, the tawfiq and the hidayat to carry out such a'mal that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala bless us with naik and salih awlad. Will we all remember these three things? Inshallah. Make dua for me as well. Allah ta'ala bless us with these Ni'mats. So many ni'mats. Our mashayikh did not even see these ni'mats. And the highest maqam is that of riza, The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when that is reached and achieved, then Allah ta'ala blesses one with jannah. And uh, the worst of all stages and states, spiritual states, is that when a person doing, doing, doing whatever he's doing, does the worst due to which he displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the worst for an individual. And when that happens, then the answer of that is that of Jahannam and fire hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, give us the tawfiq in hidayat of doing the a'mal of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from those deeds which will take us to the fire of hell. Uh, I've said this bayan and because of you, the barakat of you people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this majlis and make it a means of us entering into Jannah. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah